Okay, so let's have a look at HTTP client. Um, I put those two guys this way, so everything is the the detailed explanation of each line can be found in my previous video. Uh, I didn't do the same detail here because it's very repetitive. It's pretty much the same thing. So we we did the echo, the daytime echo. Uh, or echo sorry and um, the HTTP sockets and they're pretty much the same thing um, we, we, we just started with something basic uh, in daytime and we moved to more complex uh, structures it's all mock servers it's it's sorry it's all mock sockets so it's not very very useful in the real world none of them would be like implemented anywhere it's more about showing what does what, and it's very simple. So it's it 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 follows the same patterns. So if you if you watched my first video, then you're gonna see something very similar here. It's just uh, it it just goes on top of how HTTP is connecting, is 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 communicating with the server. So when you wanna open a website on your browser how does that browser what kind of message is it sending and how and then what does the server uh, what what the socket on the server side does and what kind of message does it send back so and, and it was very similar in in case of echo which basically we send something and server intercepted that information and sent it back but exactly the same message in here what we do is we send a, a proper you know HTTP message and server is going through that message and okay here's the response um, and sends it back so going from the top these are our includes and um, probably kind of good to know what kind of includes we have so we have one two three four four kind of standard imports and then we have sys types and sys socket which is in, in included so we can get uh, socket is for all the all the primitives and all the primitive calls are on the right side and the rest is on the left side by the way so it's, you can see wh where the primitives are being called and primitives are pretty uh, basically the, the functions from the socket so socket um, what is this one? Connect. Oh, I didn't put. Oh, yeah. Sorry, it's here. So connect, send, and receive. In in this in this case, and this is what, as you as you know, this is what client sockets do. They initialize the socket and then they connect to the to the server and send and receive. Um, whereas server does all the you know the um, socket bind listen accept blah 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 and then uh, send and receive so that's how you oh anyway so we go in here um, we have these two are for the data types and functions for changing the data type so it's really not essential for well it's essential because otherwise the program wouldn't work uh, if we didn't get the types right but it's not what it's it's not the foundation of the of the concept it's just for it's just for for practical uh, part and practical age is something that we built well I think we were provided by um, by Damien with a couple of exit um, kind of error handling functions but it's not essential again like if you look at the old previous um, past exam sorry it's you can find some some different different name patterns there and it, we don't use you know these die with user message things and we don't see practical age there it's it's a bit different so it's it's just like handling errors but that's it you could you could handle it differently if you want it's even less as essential than the the functions here that change for example uh, where is this like this guy here this is essential so we put the right data type into the sin port. But anyway, so we start the program, and this is how we collect the. Well, we kind of say, yeah, there's there are gonna be some um, 
arguments here. You can put in void in here, but then it means it doesn't accept any arguments. But that way we say, yeah, there's going to be a number of arguments, and that's that's the array of of the arguments. Start as string. Initialize variables for buffer and number of bytes counter. So just uh, not initialize really. It's oh no, sorry. So in here we initialize this and we declare this. Declaring and initializing it's a, it's a different thing. We declare when something doesn't have. When we say like this, okay, there's going to be a character. Um, send buffer of array of buff size and we don't say what it is we just say there's going to be something of that size um, but we don't specify what's inside there uh, the same for receive buffer of buff size we just say hey computer just just put some reserve some memory for this so that's the that's how we uh, declare uh, and there's some discard um, 20 characters in an array. This array of characters is, is, is a string. It's, it's a string, but basically. Uh, okay. Uh, I know sometimes you see char star, sometimes not. In this case, you don't see char star because we spe specifically say this this is going to be a uh, an array of characters. So that way you don't have to say, oh, give me a pointer to something that's going to be a bit longer than one character. In, in here, we just say, oh, it's going to be an array of characters. But don't worry, it's, it's not about the see this this exam so don't worry about that but when you when you get confused about the asterisk don't, don't worry just remember what goes where and hopefully when we get the the, the exam question there's going to be you know here is a number he, here are some some uh, a list of items and put those items into the placeholders those xxx that's the easy job then you just look at it and you remember oh yeah it it reminds me of one of these things here um, initialized and check if program was run uh, with enough code line arguments so we are looking at the client client needs to have um, exactly four arguments um, like this this is the first argument the program itself uh, second argument so index 0 is the program index 1 is the address In index 2 is port and index three is um, is the message. That's the HTTP message. Or this one exactly. But I'll I'll get that get to that later. Uh, save arguments in variables char star, which is string basically. So we 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 put that in here, and we say hey save the server IP. So argument one, that guy here, and then. Argue, and then HTTP request, so that's the message, that guy here, in here and here. And then we say, this is pretty much like integer, mm, but it's in port, and kind of, I'm sure it's good to remember that the port, for the exam at least, the, the, the port is being stored not as a char star, but as in port t um, type. And a to i is basically a, a function that, that converts um, string into integer. A as alpha to i as integer. So alpha to integer, and you put in a string inside. That's a string, one of the arguments. And we're calling the first primitive uh, socket from socket h header uh, header file library to create a socket so we create a socket here um, and we check if it if the answer from if return is minus one then something failed and exits the program so that's the that's the standard procedure here you'll see those here 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 and here uh, preparing memory for storing struct i in sorry struct no i made a mistake struct Sock address in, not struct in. But anyways, this this type, and we basically say, give me that much memory of that size, of size of server address, which is of that type. So it checks, you know, it has the library and it checks what's the size for this, and then it zeroes it zeroes it out. And remember, um, in 2018, we there was this question here. 
uh, about what goes into the mem set. Uh, so just remember the so memorize what goes into the mem set um, uh, function. We get the ampersand server address, uh, which is just declared uh, declared here. It's not even initialized. We didn't say we kind of initialize it here. We initialize it here with all zeros, and then we say. Yeah, and that is like a separate job here. So we have the memory and in for that structure. So we put that structure there. We we said there is no information there and we start populating here. So server address dot so server address, so that's the variable name that stores this structure. Uh dot sin family. And we put the family name here. Okay? And it's the IP ver version four address family. And that in my previous video I showed you. Basically, if you if you want to know exactly what's going on, it's probably the best way to learn. Uh, just do sys slash socket dot h. Go to the first link, and you get all the information here. If you scroll all the way down, you have all the all the all the um, functions here. Um, what they return. So we're looking at socket here. Uh, is that socket? Uh no. Yeah, well, for example, like if you wonder what that is, you can find it here somewhere probably AF. AF not here. AF oh yeah, here it is, INET. Uh so just and in if you wonder how is it work how does it work in socket? You go to socket and you read where does it go and why. So I'm not gonna, you know, tell you. Just, just have a look. But all those primitives are basically on this one simple website, which is very short and has very little, uh, very condensed information. Every primitive is very condensed, so it's kind of kind of cool. Good job. Um. So we were looking at what. This guy here. So we just we put first info first bit of information into the structure. Then using using inet python, which I remember as internet python. So inet python. Um, we try to convert IP. So try because if like if something went wrong then die, but we try to convert IP address and put it into the field, into that structure again. So we convert it from server IP, which is here, which is just a string. So if we if we start something as char star, the, to return it as string, we just say no star, no nothing, just, just service IP. So we put in the string here, we say of what, um, of what so this this function here inet python it it automatically inside of it if, of itself it's it, you show show that function where should it store the result of it so you say okay of that of that family okay uh, this string and take this string and put that string in here and what it does I don't know it doesn't matter if it if it returns zero then something went wrong and if so sorry so not something went wrong it actually we know exactly what went wrong invalid address string and if it's minus one then something went wrong but well, it doesn't say but it's probably very small it's it's a small detail remember what does what this function does internet python inet python uh, family address ip in string so we took it from the argument we took it from here it took this as string and it puts it inet here and this is where it goes and you you need to put the ampersand because we want to put it into the value of um, of that address address in memory so don't it's it's again a c thing but ampersand has to be here I don't want to make it too long. Using inet python mm -hmm. and put it in. Yeah. So then this line here, starting port in port field using htons. Um, 
So again, I just say H tons. How many tons? H. Why not? Um, and server port. Well, it's a port. And in port we have very, very heavy cargo ships. And they have tons in there, so it's like H tons. I don't know, just trying to remember things. You know, after the exam, you please don't remember these names. You don't You don't need them. Or maybe we do. Like, maybe someday you start working on very, very low-level applications. Sorry for making assumptions. Um, so then we do another primitive here calling connect. So after getting the socket um, initialized and getting the structure of the address, uh, server address uh, struct, uh, we call the connect and we use that in here. So we first we use the socket that we initialized here, we created here, and we use that address in this funky way. So first we say it's type struct sock address star and then we do ampersand server address. Again, kind of silly looking. This is how C operates in, in case of structs. Uh, just memorize it, that's the best somehow. It's not that hard, it looks not that crazy, it's just struct sock address. Um, oh wait a second, this is like, it's different, this is the sock address in and that's sock address. So oh, remember that, this is the in and this is not in. Um, that's it. And then we say what's the size of it. So this is the, the connect um, primitive requires to be told what is the size of of the thing we put in there basically and we check if it, if it failed and then we prepare send buff, uh, buffer variable using uh, snprintf function so we put in uh, and if you google sn here. No, I googled that before anyway so it, that's where it goes, that's what's the size of it, uh, no sorry, send buffer, send buffer here, so that's the, that's the size of, so sorry, that goes in here to the, that's going to be something that we send, as you can see here, that we're going to use it here, and then this is the size of it. So maximum size, as we can see here, we have send buffer of both sides, whatever we, it's set in practical age. So if it's like 500, then it means we can put 500 characters in there. So it's going to give you 500 memory in RAM for 500 characters. Uh, is it bytes in ASCII? I think it is. 64, I think it is. Um, okay, and then HTTP request. What is HTTP request? Uh, hello, HTTP request. Ah, here. So, oh, so that's the message. So we we kind of we buffer. As far as I know, SN uh, print makes a buffer with this message of that of that size. So we we put something from here to here, and we have to say what is the size of both of them. Um, and we we use that buffer in our send primitive. Um, which returns something of type size s size t, which is not as important except for the the error checking. It just returns something as a kind of message back to the program saying, okay, it's either went wrong or right. Um, so minus one is wrong and anything else is right. So send, we say uh, through which socket we send. Um, what do we send? Of what size? Yeah. So we, we say, okay, of what size? And zero for some reason. 
check check the the uh, check in here. Why is it zero? Sorry. Uh, yeah. So just just if if you wonder why is it zero, you can memorize to put zero there. But if you wonder why, just check it. And then there is error check in. So we send it to re uh, to request something from the server. So we are sending this this message. I am client, and I want to get index HTML. Uh, in HTTP 1.1 um, courage return so host uh, I use Google uh, .ie because for some reason I couldn't connect to DIT uh, courage return like here um, connection close Af after you send me something just close the connection uh, that's the message I'm sending here in the send call in here um well I can send whatever I want it's just in our example I'll, I'll be sending this whatever I put into the argument in command line that's going to be sent mm. and then we call receive so we send something and for some reason it waits for the response I don't know why kind of yeah, it it waits. Yeah, oh yeah, sorry. So it's it's kind of looping. It it waits for something. And it, it looping, looping, looping. As long as we didn't go bigger than mm, Sorry. Num bytes. All right. So as long as there is no error. So yeah, we were receiving something back. Oh yeah, sorry. So in here, in while we kind of we call receive, so we wait for something, and when we receive something, we start counting. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger because the more bytes we receive, the bigger this number becomes. In here, num bytes becomes bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously, it can get bigger than both size. Uh, so, but basically, as long as it's not minus one. Minus one, as you can check on the in the documentation page, means error, and then it breaks, and then so it goes into the uh, the loop when it receives something, and every time, depending on the size of the buffer, um, of oh sorry, of how much information we 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 received, we say okay at the very end of the receive buffer. Of that index and obviously if we have one uh, one byte we kind of index one is a second um, character in in receive buffer meaning that this one byte will be stored as the data and then at the very end the second uh, byte will be backslash zero which is the end of the string this is how you in C you terminate well, I think in computers, basically, com when computers see backslash zero in a string, they say, okay, that's it, I, did, I, I finished. You can do, like, escape. Uh, you can escape this. It, it, it doesn't mean, like, if you open Word now <laughs> and you write uh, backslash zero, it's going to just crash. There, there are ways of... But you have to be careful on the other side. Like, whenever you, you handle backslashes uh, and you want to display it, uh, just just remember that computers see backslash as something like, oh, I'm going to do something here. This is something meaningful for the computer. Or you escape it. And then it's just a string. It's just a backslash. Um, F puts standard. So we just like, we, we, um, yeah, we print it to console in here. Uh, the buffer Yes. Yeah. So we send. Okay. So we send the request, and we're receiving the web page. Basically, we we send the HTTP request, and now it's byte by byte. It's sending me uh, HTML HTML file. Um. So as and when we see two enters, courage return, courage return. Um, that's where we know we're finished. Yeah, with this this string str 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 function, 
it's looking it's looking for this if inside of our receive buffer we find this um, then we're finished break break the while that's it um, check if we have if we don't have any errors so if it's not minus one the return of receive is not minus one uh, otherwise just give it give us an error um, give us a nice enter for just just fi final final line feed as it's called in here so basically just to make it nice just just go one line lower uh, close the socket and this is the, the 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 thing you see everywhere and always remember about close close socket every it doesn't matter if it's a client or it's a it's a it's a server it it always has to uh, close the socket the difference between client and uh, server is that we close the socket at the very pretty much at the just because before exiting the the program server um, closes inside of the forever loop server as as because it's a server it's it's in the forever loop so it's just like loops and loops and loops um, forever that's how we can access every website at any time because it just keeps looping and, ch and waiting for your request so it doesn't close the socket before exiting the program it and there is no way like it, it never reaches this region it never it, it there is no way the program can kind of skip this line and go in here you can either shut down the program by force you know say okay control c or unplug the computer the server um but there's no way you know you can exit you can get out from forever loop but anyway every time it connects but okay I'll get there in a second I'm skipping lines so again some include um, we are including some stuff here and then these two lines are basically a, a mock version of an HTTP uh, response it not, it's not HTML file sorry about that I'm gonna change that now because I'm gonna forget it um, it's uh, mock create mock HTTP responses. So it's either home page response or error response. Mm -hmm. So if and it's it's just it's just for presentation. It's it's more complicated in real world. Um, no point for us to spend time understanding how it's it's in the real world because every server works slightly different so it's never exactly the same um, but the principle is the same and that's the principle but basically mm, these two lines are for uh, having something to send back to the um, to the client so the you know the this library understands it because we are gonna we're gonna receive it uh, in here we receive it some answer and oh no sorry receive so whatever we we send back we received it doesn't matter what what that is but then it it looks nice uh, it looks like an HTTP response doesn't matter it's just uh, just for presentation set max pending connection queue size yes yeah, so here because it's a server, we have to kind of say, okay, if we have five connections pending, so there are five guys, five clients trying to get in, if there is a sixth one, just crash, send back some information that didn't work, and, you know, so the client, the client um, tries again in, in, in a moment after the queue gets less um, less busy. Okay. Then we start the main function. Imported. That's uh, that's me being silly. That's not that. That's the. What do we do here? Uh, just initialize things. Mm -hmm. So we initialize those variables for the future. They don't do anything. It's just like, hey, give me some memory in in RAM. Um, they are significant, like 
uh, for the URI is the, the address, you know, the this would be URI and so on. Um, oh yeah, so we're going to use that in the future. Yeah, so basically what we need is to know is to know that um, these are some character arrays, so strings that will be used in the future. That's it. C just needs to know that it needs to reserve some memory for it. Mm, check if program was run with correct uh, amount of arguments. That was that's just two because server is run by doing just program and the uh, port that it's using and nothing else. So just two arguments, program and the port. That's why it's two in here. Uh, Save port number, just like before, in port T, um, A to Y. Okay, and then you have socket call, first primitive call. Um, again, same structure, uh, family, the stream, and uh, type, protocol type. Um, check, check the documentation, what exactly goes in there, and just remember what goes in there. It doesn't have to be exactly AF, INET, you can use a couple of different types. So kind of keep in mind keep in mind that it's not exactly it. Um, then we go in here, declare and set memory for the server address. So before we were before we were setting something to send, that was the address that we are sending to. In here, we put the address from the argument line from the command line the argument uh, which which basically is the address of, of where we send our message in case of server after calling socket we are actually preparing our own address this is my address in here um, but it's also stored in the soc address in uh, structure okay and we populate it with some information like family, like uh, the address, but in a bit easier way. In here we have to do some. Uh, what is the structure here? Yeah. So in in case of the address of the server that we sent to, we have we had to turn it from string to something else and put that into here so we use that init python um, in here we don't have to do it because it's we just take it from mm, any incoming interface yeah so oh yeah sorry so that means Any incoming interface, yeah, okay, okay, so any, any, inco that's how you say, that's my, that's the address of any incoming interface. Just properly memorize it, properly, good thing to memorize it, that's, that's significant. And then, bind, um, socket, as always, socket, and then, yeah, the same thing. So, same thing to, we didn't do bind in here, we did connect. So connect and bind is kind of, is the link between, mm. oh sorry, no, it's a similar thing. It's not the link, it's a similar thing, because in here we connect to some IP, sorry, to some address, and then in here we bind that this port is our gate in okay so we need to put in the socket and the address structure and the size of the address structure that's how that's how bind operates and then we listen to that bind kinda no we don't listen to the bind well we listen to the port so kinda we have we have to bind and this is the the thing we have to remember as well what goes first first we do socket bind then listen, then accept, then receive, and then send. Well, send and receive, you know, I don't know if it has to go 
Well, when you're a server, you have to receive first because you don't know what to send. Although you could be a server, kind of a server who that sends just information all the time. So maybe you don't have to receive anything. Anyway, but the this socket bind listen accept. This is the the things that happen before receive and send. In that order, that exact order, order. Uh, we have listen socket. We listen to this socket. We can have only max pending queue size of uh, size. Sorry, the size of the queue can be only max pending, and uh, it was set in here to five. Um, <laughs> and we go into the forever loop. So kind of. I remember that listen is before forever loop in a way that you don't just keep saying I'm listening. You say, okay, I'm listening, and then you continuously listening. That forever loop is basically listening. Okay, so it's like you say, I'm listening, you have to kind of, yeah, you, you say it to the to the computer, uh, I'm listening, you put in the, the socket that you're listening to, and how many pending connections you can you can accept, and then you actually keep listening without saying, I'm listening, I'm listening, I'm listening. You just say, yeah, keep listening. Um, in here, we just initialize some. Okay, so in forever loop, declare client address variable of type socket address uh, address in and uh, set client address len to size of the above. So basically, we initialize the socket. Uh, mm. We initialize the socket address, we declare socket address, and we uh, we check what's the size of it for some reason. Probably use it here somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But it has to be socket lengthy for some reason for accept. Yeah, see, sometimes it kind of doesn't make sense. Like, why don't we just say, hey, ha just size off. Uh, put that size of whatever in here But you would actually have to say oh well, I want to convert it to this type That's why we put that line in here so we can use this variable in In here in here. Yeah Because of the type data type, but it's really pretty much the same thing for human person like if you read it read the number that would be the same but for computer, it is important to know which one is which. Okay, so now we are in accept. So we are accepting the connection. Um, and we put in the server socket. So again, just this is coming from this socket. And the address of the client. Oh, sorry. So we probably use this to store the address of the client that we accepted and that's going to be the size of that uh, data that we store. If something went wrong, if it's minus one, then give us an error. Oops. Give us an error. And then, so after accepting the connection, we get into the loop of receiving. So from here, mm, while, boom, to here. So that's the while loop here. From this bracket to this bracket. Okay. So that that's all we do. So receive uh, again socket. So pretty much uh, easy thing to remember after doing the socket thing, which accepts. Um, family, the stream, and the the the, the pro not prototype protocol. Uh, we use that socket in every other um, in e every other primitive in bind. There's service socket. It's not service. I keep saying service. It's server, but it's just socket basically. It's just socket. Uh, listen socket, um, accept socket, receive socket, and then something else. Yeah. Mm, 
so we say oh no sorry so in receive oh okay so this is something to remember that it's not exactly the same because in here it's a socket for um, we accept socket sorry we accept through that socket server socket but we store this accept return whatever return returns sorry accept returns we start it in client socket and then we use that for receive okay um, because we're receiving something from this kind of one-to-one -one socket now it's it's a connection one-to-one -one be between the client and the and the server that is receiving something and in here we say okay so that's from client so uh, socket uh, receive buffer so we're gonna store something into the receive buffer that was uh, here that was declared here so that's gonna be the size of it whatever we put in there 500 maybe in the you know the practical uh, where's practical it's practical somewhere here oh, here in practical dot h that's our file in the in there you can find the the variable called buff size um, it's it's a concept of uh, enumeration enumeration it's instead of putting the number in there we say okay this is the variable that we can change very easily somewhere externally and it's just be easy, easier easier to manage receive okay so we put the information into here and the message can be of size buffer size minus one because the last bit in buffer size has to be backslash zero so we always put that minus one we can get all the we can we can fill all the information all the all the memory that we said that buff size is minus one because we the, the last bit of memory has to be uh, backslash zero and then zero goes in here for some reason check it on, on the website um, it's some sort of a flag as, as far as I remember uh, but we use zero so just use zero in your code uh, we check if it's not zero if it's more than zero if it's uh, if it's minus one then it means that there's an error if it's zero that means we're not getting anything so it's just impossible so whenever we get something we um, yeah after accepting the connection we keep getting some information uh, some message through that receive primitive uh, so we, it, that number here grows with each byte it grows from one to two three four it counts it kind of you know because the return uh, value from receive is just the number of bytes received it's gonna just grow if it's less than zero then there's an error and it should break uh, and if it is less than zero there's gonna be a, a message basically in here what it does is each time as as I said before each time at the very end uh, of the bu buffer receive buffer um, we put in this backslash zero saying this is the end of the of the string and we are looking for so we f puts uh, am I correct that this means we start putting I don't think it matters maybe just remember how it works I don't remember exactly how it works and it, it, it doesn't matter that much in context of of computer um, networking uh, it's just a function that we have to use here to receive something and then we are just looking for each time we receive something we check okay is there something like backslash r backslash n backslash r backslash n meaning that it's the end of the message if he has them break from the while while loop mm, which means it's fine it's it's we finished the message received all the message and it's stored in the receive buffer and now we are scanning through it and we're checking you know what's in there and we we break it down with the s scan f and again if you want to know exactly what it does just google it but we say okay this is the string this is the format of it string 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 inside of a string of, of a line go line by line um, so every time you see backslash r backslash n somewhere like 
in here, like in my in my message that I'm sending from the client, uh, it's a new line, and it and it it, it does the this thing again, and it's probably like looking at here's one string, here is another string, and here is another string, okay, and what it's looking for is this middle one, and you can see here, first it discards. We use the variable discard because we have to start it somewhere, but we, you know, we, we never use it. And then we use URI and then discard. It's some information we don't need. So, um, so yeah, and then we just check if, you know, the first, if the, if the URI is, so, so we do string compare if URI is, so it's something we start in here, the middle middle bit, this one here. If, the, if it's index HTML, if it's index HTML, so zero means yes, this is this string compare returns zero when this string and this string are identical. It says, yeah, okay, found it. So we just spit out the home page, the mock. Uh, HTTP response for home page and uh, in case it's not index HTML and it's very very simple things like I if, if you ever build a server and you put this as your socket then you don't have many things going on on your on your server and nobody's gonna use it but basically here it's just a kind of you know how it works how it could work it, it make it makes it work, but it's not very useful. In other case, so it's either index or nothing. And if it's nothing, then send the error uh, HTTP answer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then oh oh yeah oh okay. Oh, sorry. So we don't send it yet. We just uh, we just put that that page into the buffer, send buffer. So we either put the home page into the send buffer or error page um, into send buffer as well, depending on if it's index or not. And then we do the send primitive using the client socket. So that's the one one to one socket. Um, send buffer so this is the message we're sending and uh, what's the size of that message and uh, zero is the flag that we are using in our example if you want to know what what options go in there just google this send um, well go to the website I showed you if there is minus one then we get the uh, error as always as always minus one means in case of these Primitives, primitives here, uh, minus one is something bad. And then string copy, so basically we just say, hey, put into URI nothing, just empty string. And close the socket, as I said before, uh, every time, you have to close the sockets. It's either you finish with the client request or you finish with the loop of the forever loop. You did the, the round of receiving and sending information between you and the client close that socket and then when you receive more information from the client open it again and close it open it again and close it it can't stay open okay so this is the client and server this is our how we run the client so the way we run the server is basically we just say uh, dot slash which means well in the terminal if you're in the folder you do dot slash Obviously, there are many, many other ways of, of running a program. Like in Windows, you just double-click on, on an icon, and I'm sure there is a way to double-click on an icon and run the server. But, you know, Linux way, if you're in the folder, that means I'm in the folder, open this program, um, give it these one, two, three uh, arguments, make it, making it four arguments, actually, in the command line. And... And it, and, it, and it runs this uh, this kind of these events so this mes message so we put in the address port that it that the server is listening to 
so it's not our port, it's the port of the server that it's listening to. Um, although we are the client that we send, like, okay, we, I, the client, I want to connect to this guy who is listening to this port, and I want to send this message to that guy. And this uh, dollar sign means um, it's a string, and don't worry about the backslashes. Sorry, these backslashes. Slashes are fine. Backslashes, backslashes are something that um, that computers see as as a symbol, rather, or like enter or tab or or something like that. So they're dangerous. So if you put in C or sorry in Unix or Linux, if you put this S in here, sorry S dollar sign you kind of say yeah don't worry we escape all the backslashes and they are just a message being sent to the to the server and that's how it looks this message CR is the carriage return so it's like enter so imagine it's not here that's kind of as a human I would send you that kind of message just get this file via this using this protocol uh, from this host and after we are finished, close the connection. And it says it all in here. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, and so, yes, yeah, just have a look. This is how it works. We say uh, independently, we start server first, and then we we send the the client message through. Opening so when you start the server, you open a socket, so you initialize or create socket. I don't know what was the right name for it, but you basically you yeah, let's say you create a socket, um, you bind it to the port uh, from that we put in as an as an argument, and then we listen to that port and we create a forever loop that listens to whatever uh, requests are incoming through using accept, receive, and send and close. We close the socket after. And in here, uh, whenever we need something from that server, we need to create a socket and say, oh, so in the mean, in, in, in between, you get the, you know, data preparation and all that, but we, we, we talked about it already a couple of times, so it's a bit boring and it's, you know, it's a bit tedious. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of mem memorizing for the, for the, for the example. Anyway. So we connect, uh, the server accepts our connection, and so kind of, as, as you can you can imagine this con this accept accept probably has a has some sort of a message back to the to the client saying yeah that's fine we we are we are connected, so we go to send and we send some message which is which is here, uh, and you can see here we use the send buffer, and so that send buffer with this message here. Uh, sends it to receive and while receive while we're receiving uh, we are collecting this information and then we you know break down this first line this get URI and and uh, HTTP number and we say okay we have something in here we have discard URI discard yeah discard URI discard and we want to take this URI and check if it's index HTML and if it is, there is there is my, you know, buffer. We are. Go I'm gonna send you this homepage. In other in other case, I'm gonna send you this. I'm gonna put this into the send buffer. And I'm sending it back as the client. I receive that, and do my magic in here. You know, when you receive the message, you can do whatever you want with that message. You know, you you put that into the buffer, and then in this case, we we wanted we wanted to s s scan f. That message, but in here you probably want to put it into your browser and and render it as a web page. But again, like it's all mock presentation kind of type program. It wouldn't work in in the real world, uh, at least commercially. Okay, so here I put. Okay, so in here I put a couple of like uh, like all the stuff that I was talking about. There is daytime client, eco client, HTTP client, and then we have eco uh, echo server, echo or eco, I think it's echo, echo, 
echo server and HTTP server. And so you can see, okay, daytime, because, for example, one question was, um, you know, looking at the code, which example is it? I think 2018 had that question, like, which, which, which code is it? So I think in 2018 it was daytime client. So you can you can you can see it because it had only socket connect and receive. It didn't send anything. It was just like waiting for the buffer to come in uh, from the server. So as I said, like if there is a server that is like constantly sending a message, you can go ahead and connect to it and say nothing and just wait for the message to to get back to you. And that's the case here. And then, but this is more you know real world um, example here the echo and especially echo uh, sorry the oh yeah mm. yeah um sorry so echo client and echo server and http client http server so um because obviously as a client you want to send some message saying oh i want this there's my here's my request and you you give me something back well you you can compare I'm not going to go through it. Um, I don't know if you can see. I, I sent I sent the link with the presentation with it, so you can you can zoom in and see better, or just you know, I I put this together so we know what is the difference between each of them. So as I said, this one doesn't have send. This one kind of you know uh, just sends a, a a silly message here somewhere that doesn't. What is the difference between that one and that one? Sorry, client. Um, yeah, and here you you you're looking for the URI, whilst in here you just receive and you send it back. So, yeah. So check, check exactly how it works. At this point, you should know, you know, what does what, bit by bit. So, um, if if you go through all of those codes again, you'll see, you know, what kind of stuff is being called and what kind of stuff is being used. So when there is a question, oh, tell me if it's echo server or if it's echo client or tell me what is the difference between client and server. Client and server is easy because client, if, if they ask you if it's um, client or server, if, if, if that's the question on, on the exam, then easy. If it's client, it just socket, connect, send and receive and close. And if it's a server, it's, it's asking, it's, it's doing socket, bind, listen and then accept receive and send in the loop so and and also if you just simply by seeing for loop forever loop that's like okay this is a server thing you don't want to have a client that when you click on the link it just keeps doing that one thing and doesn't and never leaves it and you click something else and it's like no sorry i'm in the forever loop for that one thing you did it wouldn't work so forever loop is it's like you know server server is like on forever and doing the same thing over and over again so it kind of makes sense that only server would have the forever loop so there is the question here's the question from 2017 I think um, yeah so <clears throat> we have the, the the list of things that we have to put in and probably we won't have exactly same question probably you want to um you know it's not as relevant as the the one from 2018 because 2018 had the same naming while in here it's the old version so like in here i wasn't sure what to put in but the first ones like you can see okay if they're looking for socket i not i need to remember what goes into the socket if you're looking for sin family into the you know this the, the struct uh the address server address struct i need to know what goes into this uh, uh sin family thing and so on so like in here you have a af inet goes in here in here goes suck stream um 
and you can find it here somewhere. Sock string goes in here. Um, uh, AF inet goes here, and then we have port. So port, you remember the 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 tons. It's a super heavy heavy tons. H tons goes in here. We're looking for H tons. Yeah, that's here. H tons goes in here, and then we have bind. Sorry, listen. Uh, what goes into the listen thing uh, socket and this the second one was uh, in here but well, memorize it the, is the the queue the, the size of the queue so probably is the listen queue or sorry no the max line or listen queue listen queue probably yeah no max line would be our um, both sides uh, see the, the, the naming will be different I'm sure we're gonna stick to this and not to not to these basically i i can see that the main thing are the the pr uh, primitives so socket bind listen accept receive and send primitives by primitives i mean the functions basically and what goes into those functions so it's very very easy job for for a lot of points like 20 points i we just have to um you are required to replace the values xxx with the correct term for the above list. Use the line numbers to identify where your uh, where your co corrections are made. Uh, note that in relation to lines 23 and 25, there are multiple terms missing. Identify line number followed by the correct terms in sequence. Um, so basically, we put in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 elements and we get 20 marks so that's a lot of marks so all you have to do is mainly remember the what goes into each of these primitives plus the connect one from the from the client so we have socket bind listen accept receive and send and then there is one more in in the client called connect and you just have to know what goes in in here just memorize it uh, make it logical if you want like a, it's like listen for example listen um, has s s the socket which is obviously the socket because it, it always after getting the socket in uh, sorry after creating the socket we use that socket every every time after accepting the connection we create new socket the client socket and we use it for send and receive uh, but for bind and listen, we cre we we create a socket first. So every every time we do something with the socket anyway, even the something that creates the client socket, it uses a server socket. So this is the easy bit. Like it's always using the socket, and then the listen. Well, you listen to only you know you can't listen to a, a thousand of people. So you want to say okay, I want to listen to some you know a couple of people. So that's 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 how I remember things. Listen is very easy, and it's just socket. And because I remember, you have to remember the sequence. You, you need to know that after the socket there is bind, after bind there is listen, after listen there is accept, then there is receive and there is send. Okay, you can imagine uh, that there is a okay, socket, just socket. It's always first, and then you bind. <sighs> You get your friend and you bind him to the chair because you want you want him to listen, okay? So you bind that guy and then he listens and then he accepts the situation and then receives uh I don't know, slap in the head and then he breaks out and slaps you in the head. Okay? I don't know, find a way to, to remember things like that. It's just memorizing things. But then when you know the sequence, mm, you'll know where where things go, and um, knowing that the socket, the, with this so first socket call, we create the server socket on the server side, and with the accept, we create the client socket. So whatever is below the accept, we use the client socket, and whatever these two basically, we have two, sorry, three and two. So for bind, listen, and accept, we use the server socket. This one here, and for receive and send we use client socket, and that's it. 
um, for listen, very easy job. Yeah, use the, 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 the server socket and the, the max pending. How many people can can try to get in? Uh, I, I, I have space for five people to to list to uh, to wait until I kind of process that person, that person, that person. Okay, finished. If you have like a thousand people uh, in the queue and it takes like, I don't know, 10 seconds for you to process the, the, each request, the thousandth pe person could be very, very angry that they wait so long. It's better to say, sorry, something went wrong and, you know, try later because I'm busy. Anyway, so if, if we get one of these questions, the XXX, just put something into the XXX, we're fine, we're happy. It's, it's just remembering things. So you get all the primitives plus some of the, you know, the structure is important. There was a question about like this, what's that data type? Uh, it's good to remember the memory thing from the client. You know, when we zero out the memory, the, the structure for server address, uh, it's good to not remember this. Um, so yeah, but, but the, the main thing, the main thing, go through each of the each of the um, primitives. If you remember these, at least you get seventy five percent of of the mark. The rest is well, sorry, not really one, two, three, four. No, it's half and half really, not even half. Uh, but then again, we get the list. So if you if you kind of know which which one goes where. Um, these will help. I don't have a better solution for that. Okay, so another question here is refer to snippet of code. Um, there are 13 errors. Um, 10 of them, okay, so 13 errors uh, introduced to this code. 10 of the errors relate to the incorrect use of arguments. So something inside of the brackets after uh, function and incorrect return values. Okay, return values. Okay, and three relate to the sequencing of the socket primitive. So again, like I don't know exactly how to fix that one because it's an old uh, format, let's say, old naming pattern. We have something else in here, different names, different, even the functions are different, like accept. They're all lowercase. In here, they're all uppercase. SA, we don't use SA, we use structure address. So it's like, it's all slightly different, yet very similar. So like, you can see, uh, but just kind of get ready for that kind of question. Um, again, remembering what goes where, as for the previous question, will help you with this. So knowing all the primitives, all those, socket, bind, listen, what goes in there, um, that will help to answer this question. So you can see here, server socket goes to listen and listen goes, if you if you use the listen primitive, you use the server socket in here. Uh, this socket here, I don't know, listen FD, I, wouldn't, I don't think it's called listen FD socket. <laughs> it should be called uh, server socket or something socket, client socket or socket. Yeah, so probably that's a that's an error. But then again, like this is not the code that we used, so I'm not gonna even go through it. But it's just this one is actually fine. Yeah. So, but knowing knowing the code and the the, the main functions and what they what they accept will answer a lot of questions. And the easy question, I, I love that question, it's, it's the, if it's a client or server, it's a very easy question because it's, you know, if you can see a listen, bind, accept, that's obviously server because these are the guys used for the server, they're never used in the clients, uh, on the client side and you have the forever loop as well, so that's a, it's a very easy question. Mm. And why, I, like, you probably know, but forever loop. Why I know it's a forever loop? Because there are no arguments inside. Just like, do nothing, 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 just like for, whatever, 
do something for whatever do something so it never it, it there is no way to check something that goes false it's always true this is always true okay mm. so refer to the code snippet in figure one and the following socket primitives uh, so again like you have first question replace xxx um, yeah, note that the text x like if sometimes it can get get confusing why there is a note, but that note actually is just like okay, don't get confused. The xxx does it's not like a variable. It doesn't mean like if you put a in here, you have to put a a a a a a a in here. It's it's just a play. It's like blank, 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 blank. This is what the second second part of the of the question is. Basically, it says put the put the right uh, information into the right place. Again, the same question. Um, just memorize it. Memorize what goes where. Um, oh, sorry, I skipped that question here because I have no idea how to answer it. I think it's a stupid question. I don't know if we did anything called out of sequence. Probably we did, but I didn't. I skipped it. Um, but like because maybe it's because it's not our code maybe if i could see okay this goes there this goes there but it's it's slightly confusing for me so i just skipped it sorry about that and there is this question here uh, identify the line numbers of uh, in figure one uh where each of the above where each of the above socket uh, primitives should be inserted so this one is a bit easier because you can see the blanks um kind of if you compare our code with this code it actually makes more sense so um, again it's good to know where each primitive is going um, each primitive each each function goes um, socket goes here uh, bind and listen go here next to each other um, which in here that that's bind, that's listen, that's close, okay, socket. Mm -hmm. And then you get accept and then receive and then send in here. I don't know if there's send in here, there's no send, there's just write. Is it right? I think I saw write somewhere. There's read, which is probably receive. There's probably like write somewhere, by the way. Okay, that's it. So, yeah, so for me, <coughs> What I'm going to be doing for for this kind of questions is I'm going to memorize and uh, there's no easy way I can't memorize it for anyone and nobody can memorize it for me. Um, just first thing I'm going to go and go and memorize and it's going to be an easy job. It's going to be very easy because you know there is just like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of different primitives that we used. And they just the maximum uh, number of arguments is four. Sometimes it's just two. Like listen, it takes just two arguments here. So I'm gonna start with these, and then just like look at the code for a, a couple of times to remember um, two things: um, where things go, and what's the difference between daytime echo and HTTP. Um, and that's it. Uh, the question between you know uh, the question was the what's if it's client or server very easy. Uh, if it's a client, it has connect. If it's a server, it has bind, listen, and accept. So hopefully we get this question and the rest is just memorizing. You know, the the basics. Go from the basics. Go from the. I would I would go from memorizing the basics. So the the primitives, and then okay, I'm confident that I know exactly how the how the primitives are working then go okay where do they go and you know and then you can think okay so what kind of info what kind of what other stuff is going on what is here what is in here um, and that's it that's <laughs> that's all we can do for this question thanks for watching <laughs>